Quiet Wednesday here on the Sports Mix on the September 18th, 2024. Nick Verzellini, Nick Verzellini and Conley Lachlan here on the show. Of course, joined by Shepard Rams offensive lineman Wyatt Pelicano. Wyatt, how are you doing? I am living the dream. You know, it's raining out here in West Virginia right now over top of Shepherdstown, but, but the vibes are still extremely high. And Wyatt, it was a tough loss for your team last week against Slippery Rock. Uh, definitely, I think there were some positives, some negatives, but just give us uh, just your perspective from it. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously that's not that's not what we uh, that's not what we drew up. <laughs> you know, um, that we are we're a team that expects to win and we plan to win, and uh, where there's a lot of winning left in our future, and all of our goals are still intact. That's really the the first big takeaway from it. But as far as the game itself, um, it it is. Uh, I mean, we couldn't get the ball. We couldn't get the ball down the field as an offense. We uh, we were we had moments of, of success. Uh, we it's very hard to win a game when you lose the turnover battle, and we lost the turnover battle by significantly, very significantly. And uh, but that I don't I don't put that on our defense, even though it, it's. Like obviously generating none doesn't make I mean, we can still win the game as a, we should not ever turn the ball over as an offense. It's unacceptable. It's unexcusable. The whole room knows that. Um, that is the mentality going forward. That's been the mentality. So uh, we're we're going to fix that first and foremost. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's really uh, yeah. I you can't win the game when you when you lose the turnover battle. It's it's very very it's a puts yourself in a very bad spot. So. On the positive side of things, even though it's probably tough to still search for after a loss at home, what are some things that you feel like you learned about yourself and about the uh, team this year after this game? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You that is the um, that is the beauty of of a loss is that it is really a lot. It is so much easier to to learn from, and it really holds a mirror up to the entire program. And it makes it very easy for us to make those adjustments. Um, we learned that we definitely need to uh, be better. As, we need to be better with our depth as an, as an offensive line and in the box. Uh, we need to be able to fight through injuries. We need to be able to uh, continue to run the ball to have success. And we did not run the ball to have success. So, but we we know what we need to fix there. We know uh, the changes that need to be made. And we we've uh, we studied that film intensely. I guarantee you, boys, that. Uh, but yes, there is a lot to look forward to going forward because we did see, we did see, like I said, there was glimpses of good things as well. We saw Leck Powell throw the ball very efficiently, um, even though the stack column, like the interceptions and stuff. I mean, if you were there watching the game, you know that not a, he doesn't really have a lot. Uh, it's not on him, you know. So he's he's going to be a very uh, important piece for us moving forward. His ability to lead is still growing, and he's getting better every day at that. And I think that we're going to see a lot more of uh, his involvement in the offense and his arm and finding a way to get more balanced because we are a balanced program. So we got to we got to get back to that, uh, which will take some of the stress off of us as an offensive line. Um, but also, I mean, that stress that we want, and we ask for. So we got to be better and we got to be able to move the ball regardless of what they give us in the box. So, but yes, there is there is plenty to learn from. Why, when you look back on the game. Slippery Rock held the ball for over 39 minutes. The first half especially was tough for your team to get anything consistently going offensively. But you look up at halftime and you're still in the game. So uh, what are some things that you look back and, and you look at the game and, and you look at some of the missed opportunities that you had? Do you feel like there were some opportunities for your team to possibly even win the game uh, on Saturday as you look back on it? Yeah, a absolutely. There was, um, you know, Coach McCook, I think, says it best. You can you can typically break a game down to about six or seven plays uh, that end up that end up uh, when you look back at it, it feels like they decide the game. And there were definitely you look at those and you, the beauty of football is you never know when those plays are going to come. It's impossible to pick out which ones are going to be those plays. And uh, when we had when we got to those six or seven plays, we we didn't finish. But that is not a that's not a crucial error. That's why we play the game. And like you said, even with all of those mistakes, even with losing those six or seven important plays, we still found ourselves in a tight ball game because we're a good team. And uh, that goes to show we're a good team. It's still early in the season. We got a lot to improve on. 
Um, but yes, I mean, it, 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 it's almost like when you look at it, it's a double-edged sword because yes, you can look at it. It's a, it's a, it's a glass half full, half empty situation. You look at it one way and it's, yeah, we turned the ball over and it, and it cost us. We, we, we missed out on the big play, but when you take a broader view of it and look at the whole game, we played when the moments we had as an offense, we played a very good game. Our defense still has glimpses of like, there's, there's stuff that we were good at. And uh, I think that we are going to be a very, very good and challenging football team moving forward from it. What else does the mindset for the team need to be after a loss to make sure that it doesn't become a pattern here early on in the season? Um, yeah, that's that's an extremely important piece, too. Uh, one thing that helps with that is we've always said that a loss in Shepherdstown feels like seven losses um, anywhere else. You know, we don't we don't like to lose. It's it's in the culture, it's in the mission statement for us as a program. We're a winning program. So uh, it, it hurts us more than anybody else. Uh, and we are all like, we are all ready to get that, that bad taste out of our mouth and, uh, and take it out on the next team and every other team that comes after them. So, the, like I said, there, there is a lot of good things that comes, that comes with lo- this, learning this lesson early, and that is one of them. Is it'll, it, there's nothing that lights a fire under the belly of the Shepherd Rams like taking a loss early on. And why up front for you guys dealing with some injuries, Josh Crummett's uh, dealing with an injury. Of course, Ty Lucas is out as well. So we know, you know, you guys have confidence, obviously, in the guys behind them, Curtis Jefferson, Caleb Herb, who have stepped up and, and played well for you at times. But how difficult is that when you're dealing with injuries up front and you do have to work with new guys and uh, those guys have to fill those roles and – you know, obviously, you'd, you'd like for all five of your starters to be healthy and, and have those other guys in more of a rotational role. So when you're adjusting up front to some different guys next to you, how does that change things for an offensive line? Um, you know, it, on a, it, it's funny, man, because offensive line is a very, very interesting position in sports, and that's why I love it. That's why I play it. Um, but it, it relies, like, my position and how, how I perform in a game relies so much more on what, like, the other five people are doing, all five of them, not two of them, not just the dude next to me. It, it, it's all five of us. Like, we, we, are a, we are a unit. We are the only group on the field that it, that it is that way. You know, like, you can be a wide receiver and someone on the other side of the field runs a bad route and it pays no, like, it doesn't matter to what you're doing on your side of the field. That's not what we're at as an offensive line. Um, so that said, obviously, losing different people when you're training with a certain five people – for an entire year in the off season, getting ready to, to, to go with them and practicing with them all spring. Um, and we were, we were fortunate enough to not really have any injuries during the, the preseason and, and off season. Um, so yes, like when you, when you lose one of the guys that you gotten in sync with for that amount of time, it, it definitely will play an effect. There's no way that it can't. Um, I don't care where you are, what team you're playing. It, it, that is across the board. It, it plays a role. Um, that said, they are still Shepherd trained, Coach McCook trained offensive linemen, and they are very capable, capable people. You know, both of those guys, Curtis, first of all, I mean, Curtis to me is a starter. You, you can't convince me otherwise. That dude has almost just as much experience, it feels like, as me or James Bell. Um, but as far as Caleb, Caleb is young, yes, but he's, he's got a lot going, um, and he's going to be able I don't think he had a terrible game. He's got stuff to improve on. He knows that, but we all do. Um, and I think he's going to be able to step up and play football for us. I don't think that it's going to be a huge slowdown process, but it does. Obviously, I mean, it plays a role. There's no way for me to – I wouldn't sit here and lie to you guys and say that it doesn't because it, it is a huge piece of what we do as a unit. Why last week we talked about the uh, transition for you to left tackle. You've had two games now uh, here this season to – make that adjustment is there still maybe a adjustment out there for you uh, or are you pretty settled into that position now two games in in your mind um yeah i mean to me like i like i kind of said last week it's blocking is blocking is blocking is blocking you know we can dress it up and then call it a bunch of things the the uh the the spirit of the position itself is still it's still the same whether i'm a left tackle or a guard the mission is the same i'm keeping myself between uh the defender and the ball um that said i mean yeah two weeks in we saw we saw my first sack on saturday um and it it will and if it's up to me it'll be my last uh but it it, to me it's no different i that number nine is a very good player 
Um, Slippery Rock had a very good defensive line. That said, I don't I don't feel discouraged in any sort of way. I feel like I am playing very well as a tackle. Um, I've gotten a couple really good things on tape. Uh, Coach McCook has a lot of confidence in, in me and the rest of the line and where we are. And uh, I think I think the offensive line that you saw out there on Saturday is going to be the same offensive line that you'll probably see for the next couple weeks. And I think that it's going to be a good offensive line. That was just the first game. We are only going to get more in sync, and we are only going to improve. You mentioned Caleb being a young guy, Wyatt, and, and you have that familiarity of playing guard in this offense. So uh, how much do you think do you take on to try to help him out in any way that you can while he's filling that role for your team? Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's funny. I I think about that frequently. I think about if there's I, – I wonder if I could play a bigger piece for him. Um, but I I'd also don't want to – I'm sure in – I've been in his shoes before. I've been in, in the sense of, like, when you're first stepping into the role of, of be going from being a backup practice guy to a starter, um, it, it's, it can be stressful, and I don't want him to be overwhelmed. That said, he also has the smartest mind on, on, our, on our offensive line and James Bell uh, playing next to him. So I'm, I'm very, very content and comfortable in letting James Bell do all of the talking when it comes to Caleb and make sure that he's right and doing what he needs to be doing. And I, and I think that he, like I said, I think that he's stepping up and, and doing what needs to be done. And we are going to be we are gonna be a very dangerous offensive line moving forward. The focus is now clarion as you guys gear up for the game this Saturday. Uh, what has that process been, and what have you learned about them so far here this week? Uh, yeah, I know, I know offensively that they're a uh, – they're a big option team. They like to get the, the quarterback involved with his legs and stuff, um, which, I, I mean, you know, I'm from the uh, – I'm from Annapolis, Maryland. I grew up watching Navy Navy football run that triple option. So, I I, I think it's a good play. Uh, I think that they're a dangerous offense. I think that our defense knows that and respects it. Um, and they're they're practicing very hard. We already are – we're one, we're one, uh, one serious work day down this week with last yesterday's practice. And uh, they came out hard. Uh, the defense is ready to bounce back. They're they're uh, chomping at the bit to, like I said, get that bad taste out of our mouth. Um, so from that side of the ball, I'm expecting them to, to perform very, very well and uh, to come prepared to go to war. Uh, offensively for us, so defensively for them, uh, they're kind of a similar, we're getting a similar front style uh, that, we're, that we've seen last week, and it's one that we'll probably continue to see for the rest of the season because it's what a lot of the PSAC runs, which is that four down front. Um, we uh, had a little trouble with it last week with them stacking the box on us and, and getting getting numbers in the box, uh, which, like I said, I think it could provide an opportunity. We could see Lex Powell really air the ball out this week. I think we could see him uh, perform very well. Uh, that said, in the spirit of a balanced offense, which we are, I think that we are going to find a lot more success in this box this week once we, once we get these receivers going and spread them out a little bit. Uh, hopefully lighten that box up a little bit and be able to be real physical in the middle and uh, dominate the line of scrimmage like Shepard football loves to do. And why one of the changes we mentioned, of course, Coach McCook still helping out with the offensive line, but you do have a new offensive line coach as well, and Coach Breen, who has some uh, professional playing experience, I believe, as well. So what has Coach Breen brought, and uh, what's it been like to have him kind of leading that group a little bit more than Coach McCook in some ways? Oh yeah, absolutely. Let me let me. I mean, I could. Coach Shannon Breen is is the man. He's done. He's brought absolute wonders uh, to the program. You want to talk specifically about my my transition to tackle? That dude has made my life so much easier. Obviously, um, being my size and playing out on the edge with all those taller dudes, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit shorter, and I don't have as much length in the wingspan department and all that. He is. Uh, he's been my he's been my best friend with all that. He's he's taught me how to hand fight better. Um, he's got way more experience in that than me. And like you guys said, he's had a very successful career. Uh, he did a stint in the NFL. He's got a, a very good arena football legacy under his belt as well. Um, and he's, yeah, I mean, it's the stuff like that. You know, when we with Coach McCook, he's, uh, he does everything he can for us. He's working around the clock, burning a candle at both ends, uh, being the head coach and the offensive line coach. Uh, but with Coach Breen, we, it allows us the opportunity. Coach Breen can really work technique with us where uh, Coach McCook can handle the schematics of it, making sure we're going the right way in the play, and uh, doing more big picture while Coach Breen can 
break down with us on a more personal level and allow us to uh, really better our craft as offensive linemen, which is something we haven't really had since uh, Coach Ori way back in the day. But, yeah, he's, he's been a very huge help, and he's very, very good at what he does. He's one of the smartest minds I've ever been around as far as offensive line play. And the dude is, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a warrior. He loves, he loves the aggression. He loves the violence. And, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what the spirit of the offensive lineman is. So we're happy to have him.